Hi, I'm Amy from Select Travel Holidays, home of Cruise Select. Um, thank you for joining our virtual cruise festival. Now, we've, um, we've met the River Cruise Lines, Scenic and Emerald Waterways, in our European and Mekong River Cruise presentations, respectively. Uh, but they have also started to launch uh, onto the oceans. Although most of today's uh, presentations are focused firmly on the rivers, we'll be dipping our toes back in the waters of the ocean with a special presentation on scenic eclipse and emerald azura. Uh, but these aren't your typical ocean cruise. Uh, instead, um, we'll have a look at the world's first discovery yacht in scenic eclipse and a deluxe yacht cruise experience um, on emerald azura. Um, Joseph will introduce us to these brand new um, new ships. I mean, Emerald Azure is not even um, is is currently still being built as we speak. Um, See the Eclipse launched last year, so these are really hot off the press new. Um, so really something quite exciting to look at, and hopefully uh, you'll enjoy this presentation. And then I'll have a Q and A session with Wendy, um, where we'll learn even more about what's special about Eclipse and Azure, as well as having your questions answered. Hello, thank you for joining me for my presentation on yacht cruising. I'd like to thank Cruise Select for inviting me to uh, talk to you today. And I'm just going to share my screen with you and then begin the presentation. Hope you're all safe and well. So yacht cruising, I'm Joseph Grimley, Director of Sales UK for Scenic Group. And I've got two very exciting products to tell you about today, both uh, yacht cruises. And the first one I'm going to kick off with is the Scenic Eclipse. So Scenic Eclipse was an idea that our founder and owner, uh, Glenn Moroni, had while he was sitting in his office in Sydney, looking out over Sydney Harbour at all of the billionaire yachts in the harbour. And he thought, you know what? Wouldn't it be amazing if normal people could have that billionaire yacht experience? And so he dreamt up the idea of Scenic Eclipse, a billionaire yacht for the masses. And, and then it sort of grew arms and legs. And before we knew it, Scenic Eclipse had an ice-breaking hull. So it could go to really remote regions like Antarctica, the Arctics, break through the ice. And then he got even more carried away and decided to put not just one, but two helicopters on board so that you could go above and have a look down over those glaciers and um, some of the amazing scenery as she makes her way through the waterways and oceans of the world. And then he thought, well, looking down on things is great. Let's actually go underneath. So he decided to put a submarine on board as well for excursions beneath the waves to look at coral reefs and see all the sea life um, underneath the ocean, which is incredible. So what a ship, it's quite something. It's fairly large, but then it's not fairly large. It's quite small. But when you have a look at how many people are on board, only 228 or just 200 limited for Arctic expedition cruising, um, it's a big ship for that number of people you have an awful lot of space on board. So I mentioned helicopter, submarines, there's 10 different dining options. So nine restaurants or in-suite dining. There's a marina, um, there's eight lounges and bars. It's quite an incredible thing. So let's show you a little bit more about Scenic Eclipse. I was very fortunate last year, last September, in fact, 2019, to attend the naming ceremony of um, scenic Eclipse, the world's first discovery yacht in New York, which is pretty cool. The godmother was Dame Helen Mirren. Um, she smashed the bottle on the ship. It was launched and then we set sail. And I was very fortunate. I had a four night cruise on board out of New York, which was absolutely superb. So I have experienced the yacht firsthand. So giving you a, a flavor for um, how the yacht looks and feels inside. This is six star cruising, six star yacht cruising. So it's very, very stylish. It's excellent quality throughout. The public spaces are stunning um, and it really is very, very luxurious. So the scenic lounge, great place to congregate, have a drink. This is all inclusive and I mean all inclusive. I was stood at the whiskey bar there 
and a chap in front of me ordered a Johnny Walker Blue Label. Now, I'm not a whiskey drinker, but I'm told that's £150 a bottle. He got his wallet out to pay, and the barman said, don't worry, sir, we're all inclusive. Wow. So everything you want, drinks, food, you don't put your hand in your pocket. The only time you do put your hand in your pocket is to pay for any treatments in the spa or for a helicopter or a submarine excursion. But apart from that, all of the other excursions are included in the price of your cruise. The spa is superb, state of the art. If you've been to a really incredible spa in a fantastic five-star hotel, um, this is on a par with that sort of thing. It, it really is an amazing place to just kick back, relax, and be pampered. If yoga and Pilates is your thing, then we have our studio and you can uh, find your inner calm and relax whilst on board. Take some time out. And the theatre, it's not West End shows, it's not all sort of uh, razzmatazz. This is an area to congregate and really learn about where you're going to visit on your cruise. The discovery team on board will give you a full briefing and insight into all of the excursions that you're going to experience uh, whilst on your cruise. And it's a very comfortable theatre. The seats are a bit like a first class airline seat. You press the button and recline back, recline forward, um, and you might not want to get out of that seat. Dining is incredible. Um, as I said, we have 10 different dining options on board, which is a huge number for such a small number of guests on the ship. This is not like cruising you've experienced before, believe me. So you have the Elements main restaurant on board. You have the chef's table. This is where you will be invited for a gastronomic experience. No, let me say gastronomic theater. The chef comes out and cooks at your table with you. Um, you can see into the kitchens. You will be invited here if you're staying in one of the top suites or if you're one of Scenic's um, loyalty customers. So it really is quite an exclusive experience. The Azure Bar and Cafe. I used to have breakfast in here. Fab place to come along and have breakfast. There's also a really, really nice terrace outside so you can take your breakfast um, outside if the weather is extremely nice. Sushi at Coco's, a very uh, authentic um, Japanese sushi experience. Teppanyaki at Coco's as well, brilliant. This was a great evening that we had there. Um, just 10 people seated and the chef will cook in front of your eyes um, some absolutely stunning dishes. We had a Wagyu beef, which came from a farm in Australia that was voted the best Wagyu beef in the world. And Believe me, it was superb. Epicure, this is our um, cooking station. So um, we have cookery demonstrations um, and cookery classes, and you can come along, work with some of the top chefs on board to create some stunning dishes yourself and learn a little bit more about what goes into uh, the cuisine on board Scenic Eclipse. So where will you be staying? Um, what, what are your suites looking like on board? I say sweets because they're all sweets. There's no cabins, there's no state rooms. Every single suite is a suite and you have a good selection um, of various different suites, which we're going to have a look at now. So we kick off with the veranda suite, um, 32 square meters for an entry level suite. Uh, pretty impressive, uh, very, very comfortable, huge balcony um, and just that feel of quality that really does ooze quality throughout the whole of the ship. Spa Suites, um, this has a jacuzzi tub in the bathroom um, with a glass partition. If you want a bit of uh, privacy, you press the button and the glass frosts over. Um, you can lie in your jacuzzi tub with a window in the bathroom looking out over the ocean or wherever you're um, moored up at the time. And you can see from this image that's uh, demonstrated there. Grand Panorama Suites. So something a little bit bigger. When I say a little bit bigger, it's a lot bigger. It's huge, absolutely huge. Bathrooms are superb in the Grand Panorama Suite. They include a bathtub as well as separate shower cubicle as well. But you can go bigger. You can go for the owner's penthouse suite. 
Um, and you can entertain all of your fellow cruisers in your suite if you wish. It's a, an incredible space. Um, if you are celebrating a special occasion, you really want to push the boat out, oh, cruise pun, sorry, then the owner's suite is one for you. Bathroom, again, is absolutely stunning. And the outside area, you get a huge big um, outdoor terrace with jacuzzi tub as well in the owner's suite. So as I said, we're truly all inclusive. Um, we have luxury suites and every suite is served by your very own butler. So if you fancy a sandwich, you fancy a beer, you fancy a cup of coffee, you just pick up the phone and your butler will bring it along to your suite. Dining and beverages for a ship of the size, for the customers of the size, it really is um, quite a wow. Um, you've got so much choice and the standard of the cuisine is, is superb, fantastic. Spaces on board are amazing. Um, the discovery team are amazing as well. If you do an expedition cruise, you can imagine a ship like this, brand new last year, it's the best yacht in the world um, from a commercial aspect. So it attracts all of the top people. You can imagine if you work in, in marine biology, you wanna be on the best ship. Can I work on scenic eclipse, please? We've really got the cream of the cream um, on working on board. So the discovery team have got bags of experience. They're really passionate about what they do. They will in, enthuse about all of the destinations, about the wildlife and the culture and the environment that you see and visit whilst you're um, on your cruise on Scenic Eclipse. The Enrich are the excursions. Um, so we have, a, we have a particularly um, incredible excursion per cruise called Scenic Enrich. And the rest of the excursions are at your own choice. So you're not just told you will do this excursion and you go off with a group, you have a choice. So you might want to go uh, on a tour around Martha's Vineyard. You might want to go on a cycling tour around Boston. You might want to go um, on a helicopter excursion. You might want to go on um, a submarine excursion below the sea as well. And we will travel, with, we will tailor the travel to you. So we will arrange your flights. We will arrange, they're all included. We will arrange any pre or post um, cruise tours or extensions for scenic clips as well. But the service I mentioned um, is included. You have your uh, very own expedition parker when you do the expedition cruises and your, your boots. The active discovery team, there you can see the helipad on deck seven. Unfortunately, I didn't get to go on the helicopter. Um, I, was, I was way down the pecking order being staff, unfortunately, but it was incredible. Just stood on deck 10, just watching the helicopter take off and land from deck seven. And the people that came back um, just thought it was an incredible experience. Warm water pictures. All I've talked about is expedition so far. No, scenic eclipse is just as at home in tropical waters as it is in the cold waters as well. And we do um, sail pretty much all around the world. There's one of the helicopters, state of the art Airbus helicopters. They look like something out of a James Bond film. And you can see there scenic Neptune, a custom built submarine seats seven people. There we go, live recording as a phone call. Sorry about that. Um, so you can go on your submarine excursions. And there's your mudroom, so you can make sure you, you get out of all of your expedition clothes before you um, go back into the more stylish areas of the ship. So where do we go? I mentioned we go pretty much all around the world. We cover the Mediterranean, we do the Greek islands, we go up to the Baltics, we do the Arctic. So we go right up to uh, Longyearbyen, Spitsbergen and, and around there. We do Iceland and Greenland. And then she makes her way um, down the east coast of Canada and the USA, um, through the Panama Canal, down South America. She spends the winter season in Antarctica. And if Antarctica is on your bucket list, then this is the most luxurious way to see Antarctica and everything she has to offer. And you can imagine with a ship only holding 
or restricted to 200 guests during the winter season in Antarctica, she can get to places that others can't. So um, last season was Scenic Eclipse's um, first season in Antarctica, and it was incredibly successful with some amazing experiences. So the difference with Scenic Eclipse, Scenic Eclipse is the world's first discovery yacht. So you can see some of the world's most intriguing destinations in absolute six star luxury. Just 228 guests, 200 in polar regions. There's 176 staff on board um, and 192 in polar regions. So it's pretty much one member of staff to every guest. So you can imagine you're looked after. No, hang on a minute. You're not looked after, you are spoiled. <laughs> It's got the highest polar class of any luxury vessel, so it can break through the ice and really get to those remote regions when you're doing the expedition cruising. I've mentioned the helicopters and the submarine. The spa, as I said earlier, is, is amazing. It's beautiful, 550 square meters of pure indulgence. And the dining experience, I've mentioned 10 different dining experiences, eight lounges and bars, and truly, truly all-inclusive without exception. One thing to mention before I move on from Scenic Eclipse is that we do have some early bird um, offers, savings that have been added back on for all of our Mediterranean 2021 itineraries. So you can save a decent amount. You can see from the slide here that a lot is sold out, but there is still availability. So um, if you wanna get on board the world's first discovery ship and have a truly luxurious all-inclusive cruise, um, then you can go and do the Iberian uh, Discovery on the 11th of April next year, or the Aegean Adventure on the 26th of April. But the rest of the season is on sale also into 2022 as well. You can imagine it um, sells well because it's, it's exclusive and it's highly desirable. So I'm gonna move on. So we built Scenic Eclipse last year. But we're not stopping there. Scenic and Emerald are very, very innovative. Emerald Waterways is a little sister to Scenic River Cruises. Um, but we've decided that we're going to bring Emerald into ocean cruising as well. We didn't want one of these great big white ships that hold 6,000 people. Oh no, we fancied something a little bit more innovative. So we came up with Emerald Yacht Cruises. A lot of people say, is it a baby sister to Scenic Eclipse? Well, in certain ways it is, but it's not expedition prepared. It's not got an ice breaking hull. It's a warm water yacht cruise experience, um, but built with a similar sort of style in mind. It's, it's a custom designed yacht to allow unique access to fascinating ports, but not only ports, it's small. It can get into um, harbors. This, this ship is smaller than Scenic Eclipse and this will hold just a hundred guests, so even more intimate and exclusive whilst being very, very spacious on board. You dock right in the heart of each uh, destination, allowing you freedom to explore, so you're not in some big industrial port having to get a, a coach um, transfer an hour or so into the main town that you're visiting you're mooring up right there, which is fantastic. So, wow, look at that. How cool. Great little yachts, um, lots of facilities on board. The Sky Bar um, looks fantastic. The pool and cafe, I just want to get in that pool. This, of course, is CGI. It's artist impression because the ship is still, still being built at the moment. Um, so we don't have any real images yet. But we know from the images we had of Scenic Eclipse before it was built, the real thing looked pretty much identical. So this will give you a real flavor on the experience on board Emerald Azura and how she will look. So no helicopters, no submarines, but a marina platform and we'll have um, lots of toys. So you can, uh, while you're moored up in, um, let's say outside uh, one of the Croatian islands, like maybe Korchula or Hvar, beautiful crystal clear Adriatic Sea. You can dive off the back and have a lovely swim and feel like a billionaire. Um, wellness area, so spa, massage, that sort of thing. Um, the main restaurant is the Reflections restaurant. There's the Horizon Bar and Lounge, an observation lounge as well, and an observation deck. Here's the deck plan, so you can see, quite dinky. She is, she is a true um, yacht. Um, with the number of cabins, so just 50 cabins on board. 
horizon bar there, you can see what it will look like. Very stylish again, very boutique-y, um, not uh, old fashioned or anything like that. Reflections restaurant, so um, you will spend your, uh, you'll spend breakfast time, lunch and uh, evening meal in Reflections restaurant, or you'll be sitting outside on the terrace. I know where I would be. I can just see myself having breakfast out there with a lovely glass of fresh squeezed orange juice, a nice cappuccino um, and some lovely breakfast looking out over the Mediterranean or the Red Sea. We go there as well, as you'll see in a moment. Paul, uh, what can you say? How cool is that? Um, just an absolutely stunning area for you to uh, sit. In your, in your sunglasses with, with your um, swimmies on, catching the rays, cocktail in hand, why not? And the sky deck. Oh, I'm sitting there and I'm ordering a, a martini, shaken and not stirred. And then I'm going to head down to the wellness area because I can imagine I'm going to be eating a lot of food and let's keep an eye on the waistline. I might have a little run on the treadmill or, or go on the exercise bike, burn off some of those calories. So when I rest my head in the evening, what is my stateroom going to look like? Well, this is going to give you an idea. If I go for the entry level ocean view stateroom, then this is what it's going to look like. So very contemporary, very modern, very stylish, bright, really bright and airy and a big window, which is great. No inside cabins on board Emerald Azura. Or I might may opt for a balcony stateroom. Yeah, why not? I quite like a balcony myself. I, I like the fresh air. That's, that's quite nice. Some people say they don't mind. Um, now, I quite like the fresh air, so I'm, I'm going to go for either a balcony or if I'm feeling a bit more extravagant, I might go for a deluxe balcony stateroom and have a little bit more space. Or a terrace suite. I do like the outside and you've got an even bigger area. You've got your own terrace. It's not just a balcony um, and you also have a bit of uh, laundry service for you. You get a, a pillow menu. Um, so you get a few nice little extras. I quite like the terrace suite, actually. Um, now, I'm going to have the yacht suite. <laughs> Why not? I'll get my complimentary bottle of champagne on arrival with my fruit platter, and I will have a, a huge, big, um, even bigger terrace and an even bigger area um, while I'm in my uh, in my suite. Oh, wow. No, I'm having the only suite. <laughs> Walking wardrobe and a large terrace. I think you will have uh, enough room on that terrace to have a bit of a party with your fellow cruiser, something like that. Um, beautiful, beautiful suite and the owner suite on board Emerald Azura. So where do we go? Um, as I mentioned earlier, it's warm water cruising. So um, we're not going to the polar regions, anything like that. Um, we're gonna go around the Western Mediterranean, um, around Spain, France, Italy, um, we're going to do the Adriatic coast, so um, the, all of the Croatian um, coastline, including the islands, uh, Montenegro, um, Albania, down to Greece, Greek islands, Turkey. And then where are we going to go during the winter, I hear you ask? Well, we're going to reposition Azura down south um, around Limassol, um, Cyprus, so she can do some cruises around the Cyprus area, around the Red Sea. Um, we can do Egypt and um, she will go to Jordan as well to spend a bit of time and do some itineraries around there. So it's very much a warm water, sunshine, um, holiday type of feel on board Emerald Azura. Croatia in depth. Uh, I have been lucky enough to go to Croatia a couple of times. I've been to Korčula, which is beautiful. It's like a small, um, small Dubrovnik, really lovely island. Um, this one looks like a lovely itinerary. Start off in, in Venice, so it's seven nights and you leave Venice and you make your way down that Dalmatian coast, visiting some beautiful places in Croatia. Greek islands and Turkish coastlines, bit of island hopping in style. You imagine when you're ashore and you look out and see Emerald Azura moored up in that harbour and everybody's going, wow, look at that. And you think, I'm on that. I know I thought that when I was on scenic eclipse looking out at that <laughs> when she was in the harbours. French and Italian Rivieras with Corsica. Best of the Red Sea. So Aqaba, 
round trip taking in Elat is Israel's premium um, holiday resorts and Weba, Sharm El Sheikh and Safaga. So included in your cruise on Emerald Azura, you have your flights, return flights from uh, London Heathrow, or we do fly from regional airports as well. So let us know um, if you want to fly from Berlin, East Midlands, Manchester, that sort of thing. Um, airport transfers to and from your yacht. So you're met um, when you arrive in your airport and you're transferred to the beautiful Emerald Azura. You've got full board, all of your meals. So breakfast, lunch, and dinner on board. And also you get free drinks with your meals. So complimentary wine, beer and soft drinks um, to accompany your lunch and your dinner, which I think is a really, really nice touch. Um, state of the art coffee machines and tea stations. You can help yourself 24-7. Um, complimentary water restock daily. First class service from an English speaking crew. Again, a little bit like scenic eclipse. This is going to attract the best staff because they're going to want to work on this baby. She's beautiful. And we include excursions as well. This is fantastic because a lot of ocean cruises don't include excursions. This is yacht cruises, darling. So we include your excursions. We have um, complimentary Wi-Fi and we have all of the airport taxes and port charges included and gratuities as well. That's brilliant. I love that because it's something I really hate. You know, when somebody does something for you on a cruise ship and they stand there with a hand out like that, sort of looking at you, giving that expectant look and you think, oh, I haven't got any change. Uh, you don't have to worry about that. That's all taken care of. They'll serve you with a smile without the handout. <laughs> so do check out some of our other uh, holidays in our Emerald Cruises range. We have our Emerald Cruises River Cruises. And you can imagine looking at the style of Emerald Azura, it's sort of continuing the theme of Emerald River Cruise ships. Emerald River Cruise ships, we call them starships because the ship is the star of the show, really. They're very contemporary, very innovative, state of the art, and a fantastic way um, of seeing the rivers of Europe. We've also built one exclusively for the Mekong, so you can go and see the Mekong um, in comfort on a very stylish Emerald Starship. Um, Emerald Waterways also do Russia, so we um, take allocation on a ship in Russia, and we can take you on the Russian waterways from Moscow to St. Petersburg, or do it the other way, St. Petersburg. To Moscow. Cruise with confidence and book with confidence with both Scenic Eclipse and with Emerald Azura. Um, we have our 60 day flexible transfer policy. So if you book for next year or if you book for 2022 and it's getting towards the time and you think, mm, I, I don't want to travel this year, I fancy pushing my cruise back a little bit, we can do that for you 60 days before departure, which is full peace of mind for you with the uh, current events going on. Um, we also have our Cruise with Confidence pledge as well. If you have a look on our websites, you'll see what we've been doing to ensure that we're complying with all of the local authorities, new health and safety protocols. I mean, at the end of the day, cruising probably is the most hygienic and healthy holiday that you can have. Every cruise ship I've ever been on, and I've been on over 60, um, there's always somebody with a bottle of disinfectant with a cloth cleaning and wiping. They don't really, really clean anyway, um, but there's um, additional protocols that have been put into place. So, so you really will feel safe um, cruising with us on our yacht cruises. So thank you very much for listening. I'm sure you'd be thinking, hmm, I'd quite like a brochure. I'd like more information. Um, what do I do? Well, go and talk to the lovely team at Cruise Select. You can pop in and see them in their shop not sure if they're appointment only at the moment, talk to them and they'll tell you, um, or give them a buzz. Their telephone number's there, 01234 326 758, or drop them an email at sales at cruiseselect.co.uk. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen now, and I'll say thank you very much for tuning in. Um, enjoy the rest of the virtual cruise show, and uh, take care. All the best. Bye-bye. Hi, so I'm Amy. Hi, so I'm Amy from uh, Select Travel Holidays, home of Cruise Select, and I'm here with Wendy. Um, Wendy looks after both uh, Scenic and um, Emerald Waterways. And we've obviously seen you on your River Cruise panel um, and we've seen your uh, River Cruise presentations, but we're going to have a look at uh, both Scenic and Emerald Waterways exciting forays into ocean cruising. 
Um, and we've seen um, Joseph's um, presentation, but now Wendy is here to join us to have a little bit of a discussion about scenic eclipse and um, Emerald Azura. Um, and we, you know, so let's go with some questions. Um, hello, I better say hello first. Yeah, of course. Yeah, sorry, you're smiling. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll let you say hello, and then I can have a breath. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. so excited oh, to hear more. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everybody, uh, yes, as uh, the lovely Amy just said, I'm Wendy from Scenic and Emerald Cruises, um, which includes um, Emerald Waterways and Yacht Cruises, and that's what we're going to talk about today, so it's very exciting. I try to not be too excited and talk for too long. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll do our best, um, but you know, yeah. you've, you've got two amazing ships, I know one is still being built, um, the other one was launched last year. Um, yes. And let's start with that one, the Scenic Eclipse, which is the world's first discovery yacht. So it is. What is the difference? Could you tell us between a normal yacht cruise and a, disco a discovery yacht? Oh, of course I can. How long have we got? <laughs> so oh. uh, well, I was <laughs> I was incredibly lucky to um, to visit the Scenic Eclipse last year, mm -hmm. uh, just before um, she did her maiden voyage, and I was completely bowled over by the look of her. She is, and everyone's like, when are you talking about a ship like it's a person? Because she's stunning. She's got really long sleet lines. Uh, she looks like an super yacht. It's a lot bigger than you realize when you actually see it approaching yeah. the, like the pier side, um, the dock. But, um, you know, when I heard the word, the title for the world's first discovery, Archie, it makes you think it's just, you know, a marketing slogan, but it, it really is the world's first discovery yacht um, from, from, a, from, a, an, from a, to, to the actual outside of the yacht looks like, you know, a super yacht that you would see pull up in Monte Carlo. Mm -hmm. um, but the actual ship itself and the, and the techno, it's so technologically advanced in the design of it, which would, does make it the world's first discovery art. So um, for example, the, the, the hull is, mm. it's double strengthened hull and it's, it has a really high, it's got the highest uh, class of uh, um, polar class. Excellent. For, vessel of that size so it it means that it, it's like an icebreaker it can go mm. it's designed for all of the real challenging waters and the weather so it can it can go in when it discovers and goes all the way down to antarctica and you are going um through the all the different challenging waters yeah. it's designed to have comfort and safety for our guests yeah when you go through the Drake Passage, it's quite obvious yeah. yes, for rocking and rolling, yeah. but it's designed. So um, other things are like, it's got um, double size stabilizers. Mm -hmm. So the stabilizers are 50% larger than any other ship um, of yeah. that size. Just to cut, and, and there's zero motion as well. So basically the, the stabilizers, this is where I look like I'm doing a, um, a a dance, the stabilizers, <laughs> like their fins, they come out and they can, they stop the roll of the ship. So the, the challenging sort of like, you know, the waters and the oceans around sort of like Antarctica um, can stop a lot of average ships going as far down as the Wendell Sea um, and uh, sort of a lot of the places. But because of this, the, the, the stabilizer, it can, it can stop the roll by 30 to 40%. And the stabilizers are actually only 20% smaller than a ship of the size of Oasis of the Seas. So it just goes to show the maneuverability and, yeah. and what you can do. So um, it's also got a return, a return to port. So it's got two, it's got separate engine rooms, it's got separate houses, it's got separate fire zones. So uh, it can run separately. So that's kind of what makes it so. Uh, technologically advanced to go down to Antarctica and again I could keep talking and talking but I think that kind of that's why it, it is yeah. the world discovery shot uh, ship the bow um, the design of it uh, the stability of it it's got the maneuverability to be able to go um, really get close to we've got some incredible pictures where it got really up close to the ice shelf and you can see penguins are actually lots sort of like right up and walking by and it's only because of the gps dynamic positioning system mm -hmm. i'm doing that because that's what it's like on the bridge it's kind of like it's, it's all control from the wheelhouse 
um, and it, it, it doesn't drop anchor, so it's really safe for the environment. It gets, it gets you really stable um, and all of the azipods as well. So I keep just throwing these names out, but it helps the, with the stability um, in when you're going out into these open waters. So it's comfortable as well. Excellent. I was going to say that quickly and it just went on. <laughs> well, there's you know, obviously there's there's an incredible amount of technological advances there for you know pioneered and utilized there so uh, yeah. now i think we can really see what you say it's, it's not just a marketing um, term yeah. it is actually um there's real science behind it um yes so wow the list that, is like this <laughs> <laughs> yeah so wow thank you for the answer uh, wendy um so i mean <clears throat> so scenic um i think joseph said in his presentation began touring um I think in the about 30 odd years ago, and then it launched its first river cruises in 2008. Um, Emerald Waterways launched a few years later as a river cruise line. Um, so both Emerald and Scenic obviously have a history of touring and river cruising, which are, you know, they're quite destination immersive, um, yes. you know, styles of travel, they're, you know, they've, they've got a lot of sort of um, things in their own right. So what aspects of touring or river cruise do you think Scenic and Emerald have perhaps brought to their new ocean cruise products? Because obviously oceans, you know, been, it's, it's, it's separate, isn't it? I think we discussed this in our yes. cruise panel. Yes. And, um, so what have they brought, you know, been so, forward? That oh, so yeah so I mean Glenn Maroney who is a, who is their founder and um, still incredibly involved with with everything today you know over 30 years ago uh, the company started doing tours and even back from then he was innovating and ever since he continues to innovate like we've just talked about for scenic eclipse but he even innovated on the river. So um, he, you know, the first, we own uh, uh, all of our ships. So all our ships are actually designed specifically for the rivers that they sail on. Um, and we innovated from having the first sort of like drop down windows, um, the, um, the, the balconies, uh, the, um, the tailor-made devices. There's quite a few, the a scenic culinaire and the cooking school. So it, it kept innovating over time. So that is what he continued to do with Emerald Waterway. So when the Emerald Starships um, first launched in 2014, he kept innovating with the, uh, the swimming pool that converts into a cinema. That's like mm. a real wow. Um, the open air balcony system that brings the outside in. So there's, again, I could literally go yeah. on, on when it comes to innovating, but something that runs for the core for scenic and for emerald cruise work, uh, cruises um is is the, is the heart of everything that we do so if we look at scenic um the things that are available from touring to river cruises to uh scenic eclipse um is uh scenic free choice excursion uh -huh. so uh different options of excursions because we're all different aren't we yeah I love to go and um have some wine and I was going to go away from wine tasting but for some reason it just came back into my mind <laughs> you know I might love to go and do some wine tasting in the you know in the Mateus Palace mm. on the that you know would I'd really like it but then somebody else might want to go and look at a sort of like the ancient history site so by having free choice excursions included you it, it, it's your holiday so it's very yeah. much the same from that from the touring aspect which and then the heart of all our signature for our signature um sort of like pillar strengths really like the free choice like scenic and rich mm. uh, which is the immersive kind of excursion that's really exclusive for scenic guests that you will be able to sort of join in that on um touring river mm. so you once you sort of learn and know about scenic you'll be able to do all of these um experiences throughout now the same with Emerald Waterways. So Emerald Waterways is also very much um, with uh, we've started. So the touring came with Emerald Waterways after Emerald's uh, River Cruises and things like Emerald Active. So Emerald Active is where you know we've got bikes on board. You the swimming pool. You can do yeah. aerobics. You can go walk around deck. You can do yoga. So Emerald Active is a real kind of like excursion that you can expect. Mm. 
M1 Plus, again, it's the immersive experiences where well, I recently went in, in Bratislava into um, a local's home and he talked, we, you know, we sat there and we talked all about sort of like the history and he talked all about what his local food that and food he cooked. And so it's quite immersive. So that will be also carried through and some of those sort of like real the heart of everything we do onto uh, the yachts as well. Yeah. It's really part of the sort of the core signature um, moments. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so, I mean, this answer might depend, you know, but... Oh, great. Is, is this going to be a quick one or is it something I'm going to get it totally out of the way? <laughs> um, who's best suited to scenic eclipse or emerald azura? I mean, could the same person enjoy both? Do they attract different... Um, who would you say? I mean, yeah, absolutely. So if, we can't, if we look at, let's say, scenic eclipse, first of all, you know, she is a discovery yacht. So, um, but she's also incredibly um, at home in the Mediterranean or in the Caribbean. Um, so, you know, on, I, when we say discovery yacht, we, we talk all about the incredible, you know, the helicopter, the submarine. We, we look at the, uh, the, the, um, the discovery tours like the zodiacs and the kayaks uh the snowshoes and everything that is on the discovery side but also on the actual ship itself we you know 10 dining experiences a 550 foot uh, square meter sorry, 550 square meter spa um so the different the, the suites are really innovative so that, that the ship is really comfortable in Caribbean as much as it is in sort of the polar regions as well yeah it has like change we have 200 guests in the polar regions we have 228 guests um in the rest of the world but you know I would I would enjoy uh, an experience on sort of like the scenic eclipse in the Caribbean as much as I would in you know Antarctica and that's not discovery that sort of it's not for everybody mm. If you, I, I, I've spoken to people where they've had, um, Mister is all about getting out there and, you know, going in the kayaks and doing the polar dive and, you know, when you jump into the sea oh, and, and, but Mrs. is kind of like wants to go, but wants to enjoy a bit more relaxation and the spa, the entertainment. So it's, it is in answer to your question, it, I think it is really suitable for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, look at the um, Emerald Azura. She's very much specifically designed for warm weather cruising. Oh uh, yeah. But, you know she's um, she's got a, she's going to have fifty suites, a hundred guests. Um, when you if you when you when obviously from the presentation you will see that she's again beautiful, small and sleek. Mm. You will have um, the 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 zodiac the landing area on the back of the ship is where you can go off and you can have go for a swim. Or a little bit of snorkeling and you can come back but then the observation lounge is at the front with all the tea and coffee facilities you have to just watch as rather when it comes into sight you can sit on the top deck um in the sky bar and just watch the world go by so i think it you know it really is designed for it's very cleverly designed but also yeah. how position for everybody excellent yeah so i mean i know we've already discussed uh, in quite a bit of detail um how scenic is, uh, what is meant by Discovery Yacht and the use of technology that you've um, used. Um, so, and we've heard a lot about the onboard innovations um, and how they improve the cruising experience for the guests. I mean, it does sound like uh, you won't have to worry so much about seasickness, which I was uh, very excited to hear um, <laughs> as a, you know, as a bit of a sufferer. Um, but um, sustainability is also really important nowadays. So I presume some of this, um some of these technological advance i mean you mentioned about um the dynamic positioning you don't need to use anchors um right but you know um you're not disturbing the the environment that you're and you know the penguins obviously yes. are frightened of it. no they came up to say hello it was incredible but you know sustainability is such a big thing at, um at the moment as well and we all the different fuel that we use um it's i won't give the correct time for it I know the fuel is um, the fuel that we use. It's like almost like a really clean fuel. Um, we have got these incredible HVAC systems as well. So we circulate, and it has been from the beginning. We circulate fresh and clean air. So it, the, the air is actually not circulated. Yeah. It's all from outside. 
Um, so um, all down to sort of like the, the electricity, uh, how we manage waste and water, and clean water. It's all very, very, very environmentally friendly and all for sustainability because the ships have to be part of um, all the different governing bodies in yeah. Arctic and Antarctica. So we really excel at all of those points that you need to be able to sort of, sort of do. And we, um, you know, we, we take on local produce, produce around the world, um, but we also as well can grow our own herbs on board and different things. So it's kind of, it's sort of, uh, uh, the environment is sort of really important and it's right sort of at the top of the list. Yeah. We don't think about it as much. That's because that should be a given that mm -hmm. we look to the environment and everything that we do. So, you know, that's something that um, Scenic Animal Cruises does, whether it's on the rivers or on the oceans. Mm -hmm. Excellent, thank you. Um, during um, Joseph's presentation, we saw um, an image of the theatre on board Eclipse. Um, yes, which oh, is for, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, those seats looked really comfy. Um, they do, they go quite far back as well. Yeah. <laughs> Very comfy. Yeah. Um, so apparently they're for lectures rather than uh, the Broadway style entertainment, um, because obviously it's a discovery yacht, it does have more of an expedition focus. So what sort of entertainment could you expect on Azura or on the rest of Eclipse like you said it's not always in, sometimes it's in the warmer waters like the Caribbean you know what we actually do both so on and um, uh, you're right the the, the theatre is it, it is amazing and when I first walked in I was like wow it, you know the images don't do it justice and it's got kind of this incredible 260 um like video wall um so we do you're right we absolutely a lot of um lectures we've got all we you know we have all kind of historians um especially part of the discovery team and uh, marine biologists that do do a lot of lectures but also um the lovely william who is um my counterpart in scotland yeah. um he was very lucky to get he sailed on there last year so he um went um a week in the caribbean and he said the the entertainment is quite understated you don't expect mm -hmm as much as there actually is so yes there was all of the lectures because you yeah. know in the Caribbean there's so much sort of like to learn but he that there is a resident and um entertainer um there's a resident band that plays in the lobby bar um so we are taught we're not talking like your big Broadway shows no. as you they do have quiz nights they do have um singers that will that will perform and entertain so there is that kind of um it's more small um, more like river cruising entertainment yeah very very much like river cruising uh and you know but but, but fun in the same time so yeah, yeah the east the band was brilliant that was in the lobby bar i mean like so the it, yeah it's good so and then on the azora because it is all um if she's not with us yet but we know it will because it's only a hundred guests mm. so it, it's going to be um, smaller. We know we'll have um, sort of a very, very similar low key entertainment. But the great thing that's going to be with the Azor is that she's going to be in port mm. um, when she can for a longer period of time. So you are going to be able to come and go as well. So I know the Sky Bar is, is, is going to be open. You're going to be able to sort of really have enjoy all of those incredible views. So I think it will be very similar to the river um, entertainment. Mm. Yeah, and I must say, when I was on um, Emerald Waterways, Emerald Radiance last year on the Douro, I, I really enjoyed the entertainment. Like you say, there was um, there was a mixture of, um, I mean, it's generally more low-key on the rivers anyway, but yeah. it's um, like a mixture of quizzes, um, one a couple, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which I was mostly pleased with because I've got a couple of bottles of Matthias, but... <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> it, it's good to see that, you know, we can expect some of um, that sort of uh, entertainment yeah. on board as well. Um, so, and there's in on um, scenic eclipse there the t it's again we're talking about design innovation so we talked about externally but sort of internally as well in the actual suites there's floor to ceiling window mm -hmm. um, uh, it, it, inside it look it looks sorry floor to ceiling mirror and then you think well you know where's the tv but the tv you turn it on it's actually embedded into oh, that yeah uh, so it's kind of very clever and it, you know it's things like the Dyson hairdryer I mean Dyson actually designed um the hairdryer base for in the drawers mm -hmm. on C clip so I mean you are talking real luxury as well but um you know thinking of the world we live in at the moment as well um it, things are already designed almost for that for yeah yeah, when you mentioned the, um, the air ventilation and all that, that yes. was 
you know, you're, you're already sorted. <laughs> We're already sorted. The things like, you know, you wouldn't even think of it, but it was just really nice to have and thinking ahead to how things can sort of like um, change is that, you know, the, the bathrooms have got, so you don't have to touch door handles, you walk mm. up and they open. So yeah. already being in place. So when you talk about innovation, it, you know, it's clever. Yeah, that is good here. I mean, firstly, I always try to avoid touching doors as much as possible. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to come out with like a, you know, a hand towel on you, do you? Yeah, sometimes that is a bit awkward, but you know, awesome. sometimes that's what yeah. you're going to do. <laughs> yeah, it's what I kind of do. <laughs> so, um, uh, what, so we've talked a little bit about the onboard entertainment um, that, and you've said about some of the um, destinations um, quite broadly in terms of, you know, the Caribbean, warmer water, all this sort of stuff. Um, so which itineraries for Eclipse and Azura are proving most popular for British cruisers? What are you know, people uh, most keenly booking at the moment? So with, um, if we'll start with the lovely Emerald Azura for a change, shall we? So um, she will spend her time literally weaving her way through all of the different um, coastlines, uh, islands, um, all the water. And then it's almost like she's following the sun a little bit. Okay. Uh, so with the, um, the Adriatic coast is incredibly popular. Mm -hmm. Um, we've got voyages from Venice to Dubrovnik, but then you've also got sort of like um, a Croatia in depth, which you'll do more around the islands as you go further down, it sort of goes to Kotor, Albania, um, and then around over to the Red Sea. So then it's going to spend its time in, um, in, in, in the Red Sea. So the, so you've got sort of your Eastern Med, your West Med, your Adriatic, very, very popular. I think Croatia and Adriatic is probably some of the most popular ones we've got. And that eight day, the great thing is that eight days mm -hmm. to, to um, a cruise for longer, you can do. So you could do yeah. the Adriatic coast. Um, so you could do like Western Med and then the Adriatic coast together make sort of a longer journey so it's easy and accessible isn't it from the UK yeah, definitely. Uh, which is really really good um, and then the scenic eclipse is very much done in seasons so um, you know the, the ship is you know as we said designed for Antarctica so she spends a good um, sort of like you know your November's through to your March's in um, Antarctica so yeah. we do we, we've, we've got the Antarctica um, in depth, which is sort of like your 13 night, but then you've got longer journeys that go to South Georgia and the Falkland Islands as well. Um, and, uh, you know, not to mention that um, next year it's going to be coming over um, and going through Scotland and going up to um, Norway and going up to the North Cape. So that's yeah. all we talk about Antarctica a lot, but we have to remember that she's also um, going to be um, going from penguins up to polar bears. So yeah. when you on the arctic circle um, to be able again because of the design of the ship and the fact that she can and how she handles water you, sh you can go through um right up onto the arctic circle mm. um, can go through um the russian arctic and can go over to canada um, canada to go through the arctic there so it is and that goes to places where your regular um discover regular ships can't Excellent. Yeah, I mean, there's some real sort of, um, I guess, dream uh, bucket list items there, really. Absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you. Um, so I know we have sort of, uh, well, um, we're going to answer some of um, our clients' questions. Um, okay, I'll yeah. do my best. <laughs> You've uh, mentioned, me. um, you know, the, the wellness area on board both ships, um, with a spa and a sauna. Uh, one of my clients, Janet, um, she really loves um, a decent, you know, sauna and spa on board a ship. Um, so, but she is keen to know whether saunas and steam rooms would still be available given, you know, the COVID restrictions. Um, so would there perhaps be um, restricted access? Um, do you, are you able to answer that at this moment in time or? Well, we're starting to talk about more and more what we will be doing when we, yeah. you know, all the ships when we sort of like go back into operation so uh, you know at the moment unfortunately the world is operations are yeah. suspended, but and um, we have what we have uh, what we call a cruise with confidence mm -hmm. um and the information is available on the website so you can um have a look it, it we, we are working incredibly closely with clear yeah. 
who are um, sort of like setting out all of the standards that you need to follow. Um, we've done we've done quite a lot behind the scenes. So we've actually um, have had, had a new video today. It's where we've had um, David Whitehall, who's from Australia. He's having a, a chat with um, Erwin, who is one of the Scenic Eclipse captains, mm -hmm. and he's, he's talking about how we now have, talks about the air type air system, but also now that we've got all of the interior spaces have been coated with this Good. special coating um, that helps to um, kill off any germs or, or, or bacteria. Um, I wrote the word down, so it decomposed. I was just uh -huh. like, oh, decompose. So it can help to decompose viruses. So that is already start to happen. So we are starting to talk yeah. about um, when we sort of like go back into our wonderful world of operations, there will be, a, you know, the Scenic Eclipse has got a medical centre on board. There's a doctor um, and a nurse on all uh, on all journeys. Um, but when it comes to things like the saunas and the spas, we will, as we go, we will start to release more information. But we do have some stuff mm. on the web now when, when you, you know, like pre-voyage and post-voyage yeah. and what you'll need, you need to do. Yeah, I mean, I know certainly we'll we'll be um, advising our clients, um, you know, closer to any duration and, um, you know, departure dates, um, what they need to know ahead of that and etc. And uh, I know we also know that um, no cruise line, you know, you wouldn't sell until or unless it's um, safe to do so. Absolutely. Uh, so, I mean, I, I guess you can probably imagine that um, concerns about COVID and how it might impact um, cruise experience is... Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's kind of a running theme of a lot of the client questions and I know we did discuss this in the River Cruise panel um, and I guess social distancing is something perhaps that they're particularly um, concerned about. I guess given the social aspect of cruising uh, that's what a lot of people love about it you know yeah. they experience these amazing things they then sort of talk with them um, newfound friends like-minded travellers you know over you know cocktail before dinner they say oh, what have you done and all of this sort of stuff. Um, so socialising is important to cruising and I guess um, people are sort of wondering how open dining would be possible with um, you know social distancing measures in place um, how they would still be able to um, strike up those sort of conversations um, I know you're not currently um, you know sailing um, and I know that like you said a lot of it is being updated constantly um, yeah. but are you able to sort of um tell our clients um whether or you know if um any of these measures would be having an impact on their experience i think there's there's a couple of great things that we already have in place so scenic eclipse um as you said she's 228 guests mm -hmm. Um, out of the polar regions and 200 in the polar regions. So within the 10 dining experiences that we have, they're a lot more smaller and intimate, but we actually have, because of the guest and space ratio, mm -hmm. one of the most important things when it comes to scenic eclipse of a ship of her size and tonnage. So 17 and a half thousand tons, most other cruise ships would have 500 guests on board. Yeah ship that size but so we literally have half of that and the crew guest ratio is one-on-one -on -one. um but for actual dining capability and seats without saying so kind of like you know bombs on seats there's enough for over 320 so there's there is space to still be able to operate with distance mm -hmm and enjoy um, all of the experiences. And, and very much like our um, river ships, we have one main uh, sort of like entertainment area. So like the lobby lounge um, and bar where you will have seen the images. It is incredible. So they've got this sort of like backlit whiskey wall, which oh, yeah. mm -hmm. looks incredible. And it's all sort of centered around that. There. There's quite a lot of, um, spacious comfy seating areas so it's not like you're going to be on a much larger ship where you might have two or three or four or five twenty in a bar each so you don't get to speak to people it will still all happen in the lounge area so people will be able to strike up conversations and uh, and before and after dinner as well and because of the way our, our excursions run as well you'll be able to you know you don't have to book anything they're going to be smaller excursions so you, you'll be able to you know, make friends and go and have these different experiences ashore as well so we already know that happens that's in place so we will we will only enhance on that excellent thank you so um 
hopefully that's uh, you know put people's minds at rest um and like you know we say it is a constantly changing situation yeah um, so um i guess watch the space and like i said um i know our team will keep our um our clients updated um but i mean we've always had a lot of solo travelers um yes. and our final question goes to liz who um is is one of our solo um clients and she's asked about the activities on board for solo travellers so uh, before you explain what it's like on board for solo guests um, do you have any like solo occupancy cabins or special do you um, offer any solo um, you know low supplements or anything as you know on our river ships we we have got some solo um, state rooms some suites with scenic and with emerald waterways uh, but with on our um, ocean ships at this stage, we don't, uh, we don't have any solo sort of like uh, solo suites, but we will always look at to see what we can do for, for the solo guests. Um, it, it, because at the moment, because of the demand, um, yeah. we, you know, we, we, we only have twin birth uh, staterooms and suites. Okay, but um, say supposing, <laughs> say supposing someone was, as a solo, I guess you've already said about how the space and the you know the lounge it is easy to strike up conversation. Yes, and, and so they could still have a, a nice time on board. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And, well, and when it comes down to like the entertainment as well, there's there's uh, they do sort of like the captain will do a welcome reception. The senior mm -hmm. officers are, are there, um, and you know there's loads of different um, lectures and things in the actual theatre. And you'd be surprised how people go to these that are like minded. Yeah, um, we do have a lot of solo travellers. So, you know, we always there is always um, great things for them to do. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so just a quick question there. I know I said that was going to be my final one, but you mentioned, you know, oh, you're the same as me. There's always something else you can have. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so you mentioned the captain's welcome uh, thing. So. Do you have, um, you know, traditionally ocean cruising um, would have, you know, four more nights, et cetera, especially if it was Captain's Gala. Um, is it like that on board um, Scenic or Emerald? Because I know it's not on your river ships. It's a lot more sort of, you know, relaxed, informal. Um, so is, is that the um, attack you've taken for, um, you know, Eclipse and Azura, or are you going more traditionally ocean cruise? How, how we, um, we are... We're owned, well, so Glen Moroney is from Australia, so yeah. our company, our head office is in, in, in Australia, uh, and we, we are totally global, so we've got offices um, all around the world, in the States, in Canada, in Europe, and guests as well, so we, the great thing is you meet guests from all around the world. Yeah. But, um, I can't imagine us ever trying to say to our lovely Australian friends that, that you know, you've got to bring with you tuxedos, and you've got to... Yeah. Um, you know all of these different attire but if you want to you can do so it is a really relaxed atmosphere on board it is a relaxed dress code um, but when you do certain things like scenic and rich when we may be taking you to this amazing baroque church or a theatre people do decide to take um, to dress up on those kind of evenings and again like you say the captain's welcome yeah. um, and, and farewell we actually do that on the rivers so yeah you do talked about as much because it's it, it's a lot more low-key um, yeah. we, yeah, we I mean, do on the um on scenic eclipse as well yeah i've always found with river cruising whichever the well almost all of the cruise lines it is a lot more informal and relaxed than um, yeah. an ocean and sometimes um people i don't think necessarily particularly get changed you know changed for dinner um so definitely last year when I was on Emerald, uh, on the captain's thing, my friend and I, we wore our nice sparkly dresses and we were the only two, but we didn't care. We had, you know, we... That's the great thing, I, I, you know, I'm, 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 I'm kind of like a traditional cruise girl myself. Yeah. He's working on Cunard and I used to love nothing more than getting my grad rags on. And, and I mean, I think sometimes... You can take the girl off the ocean cruise, but you know. uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the great thing is, is that a lot of ex their guests get dressed up and yeah. if they fine but if you want to be a bit more um understated elegant and relaxed you can do and you said you thought of something to ask at the last minute I've also forgot something very important to tell you you know we're talking about innovations and what yeah. uh, what we do we are one of the first as well to have an open bridge policy uh-huh um on the with scenic clips so that is 
incredibly popular. You know, yeah, to imagine. There is, a, there is a sort of like, you know, a light to say the captain's in, you know, um, if he's in sort of like challenging seas or, or if he's sort of like busy with and docking, et cetera. But the fact that you can actually go onto the bridge and they'll explain how it all works, it is incredible. And I've never known anyone ever do that before. So I think, again, that's another real um, highlight for us. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your time, Wendy, and for answering our questions. So, it's my um, pleasure. It's been great, um, you know, watching the presentations and, you know, hearing even more about um, these stunning looking ships. So they're like amazing itineraries. So, um, and I hope our viewers enjoyed it as well. So um, thanks for your time. Thank you very much. It's, it's been a pleasure to get me talking all things uh, <laughs> scenic and emerald cruises excellent thank you and thanks for our viewers as well um i hope you've enjoyed it so um thank you thank you hi i'm david whitehill over the last decade, I've been fortunate enough to travel the world with Scenic. They have over 30 years of experience and what I've always loved is that they truly go above and beyond in everything they do. So while the world may have changed, Scenic's commitment to the guest's health, well-being, peace of mind and safety remains as consistent and strong as ever. In this video series, we'll be taking a look at the future of Discovery Cruising and how Scenic is exceeding needs and expectations of their guests. In our first episode, Scenic Eclipse's captain, Erwin LaRosic, chats with us about the world-class design of the Discovery yachts. Captain, thank you very much for joining us. Hi David, welcome on board. I'm one of the two captains of Scenic Eclipse and I work alongside with uh, Captain James Griffiths. Together, added, we've sailed more than 100 polar voyages. How has Scenic Eclipse been designed both technically and also from an ultra luxury guest experience? Scenic Eclipse sizes and, and shape is, is specifically designed to access small ports and, and unique locations the other larger ships can't reach. So this is uh, giving you more time to spend exploring the fantastic locations we specifically choose on our itineraries. Scenic Eclipse is also the first cruise ship of her size to have a Polar Sea Class 6 hull. So it gives you access to sites and wildlife where no one else can get to. The ship has state-of-the-art oversized zero-speed stabilizers allowing for, for smooth cruising. So when I speak to guests, they are impressed by how comfortable and, and smooth it is to sail aboard Scenic Eclipse. Sometimes you don't even notice uh, we are sailing. It is that stable. The unique propulsion system with two 360 rotating pods allow for exceptional maneuverability making the ship very agile. What are some of the health features and protocols to ensure your guests are safeguarded? At any time, we can ensure the, the safety of our guests on board. We adhere to a healthy sail plan. It's regularly updated and implemented. It covers a long and comprehensive list of recommendations and guidelines. Just a few key points in a nutshell uh, for you. There will be COVID-19 uh, testing and health screening for all our guests and for the crew also prior to uh, embark. There are extensive onboard uh, hygiene and sanitizing with an abundance of uh, public spaces of over 330 seatings across uh, our 10 dining experiences. At any time we can ensure the recommended physical distancing for our guests. Guests will also be provided with masks to use in locations where we can't always guarantee physical distancing, like some of our shore excursions. Scenic Eclipse has a doctor and a nurse on board for all voyages, and the ship is also equipped with a medical center. And we will have also allocated quarantine cabins if required. That sounds excellent and gives a lot of confidence that our guests are in good hands. But knowing Scenic, they'll go above and beyond. Yes, uh, absolutely, David. Scenic Eclipse was ahead of its time when we built her. She's equipped with an advanced ventilation and air conditioning system, 
which uh, ensures a safe environment for our guests. This intelligent system ensures a continuous flow of 100% fresh air in each suite and in public areas. So outside fresh air replaces inside air, so there is no recirculated air throughout the ship. In addition, all incoming air is filtered through two-stage super efficient EPA filters and treated by UV lights to reduce microbes. And the relative humidity also is uh, actively managed to ensure the best quality of air. We also go uh, the extra mile to ensure viruses and bacteria cannot spread via surfaces on board. All inside surfaces of scenic eclipse have been treated with a very special coating that decompose harmful uh, microbes such as bacteria and viruses. So guests will not notice this since the, the coating is transparent and odorless and of course it is of no harm uh, to humans. Of course, it is really an impressive and very reassuring technology. Thanks, Captain Irwin. The highlights you've shared today really showcase the world-class design of Scenic Eclipse and the steps you have in place for your guests' peace of mind. To find the voyage that's perfect for you, head over to Scenic's website to order your Scenic Eclipse brochure, which is available now for travel in 2022 and beyond. With many travellers looking to the future, it would be wise to book now with Scenic's flexible booking offers to secure your preferred suite and voyage of a lifetime in truly all-inclusive luxury. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our special presentation with Scenic and Emerald. Uh, both Joseph and Wendy have uh, given us a valuable insight into what they have to offer um, and I think they both look fabulous and if you um, enjoyed the River Cruise um, presentations I'm sure you can also see that there is as Wendy and I discussed there are you know some sort of common pillars that have, have been sort of uh, transferred onto their ocean cruise experience to sort of elevate it um, it's always exciting when cruise lines um, branch out to offer something different um, and I think this is definitely the case here um, if you would like to find out more about either Scenic or Emerald, give us a call on 01234 326 758 or email us on sales at cruiseselect.co.uk and we'll be more than happy to help. But um, again, I really hope you've enjoyed this presentation and uh, thank you for watching.